Once there was not a white man in all this country. Then it all belonged to the red man, now made miserable by the white people, who are never satisfied but always encroaching on our land. The only way to stop this evil is for all the red men to unite in claiming a common right in the soil, as it was at first and should be now. Tecumseh is one of the most remarkable people who ever um, appeared on the continent. What he does is organize an alliance that's far different from anything that people had seen before. What he argues is that Indians as Indians are going to resist, and that no tribe has the right to cede land without the consent of all Indian peoples. The Native American movement that emerges is primarily a religious movement that starts with his brother, the Shawnee prophet. Tecumseh takes this religious movement and transforms it into sort of a confederacy, an attempt to unite tribal people against the onrushing frontier. They work um, through religion, they work through ideology. They start these intertribal villages, first at Greenville, later at Tippecanoe, in which warriors from all tribes come together. So this is no longer a tribal effort so much as a new pan-Indian effort organized around them. Furthermore, what he tries to do, and successfully, is bring the British back in to back this alliance so that once more Indian peoples, now in a new form, under the leadership of Tecumseh, can make a stand against the Americans. Tecumseh is very much a threat to the United States. They never understand the prophet. They see him as sort of a, of a, a religious uh, kook. But Tecumseh is a very interesting person in that what the United States does not want is a united Indian front. They want to work on the Indian tribes piecemeal. A handful of US leaders referred to as the Warhawks also wanted to expand into British Canada. They exploited fears about Tecumseh and maritime grievances against the British to garner support for a conflict that would become known as the War of 1812. This is the last time that tribal people will have outside help in standing against a European power or the United States. You, one, one can't really say that the British are allied with the Indians. They're fighting, but they're fighting for different things. The British are fighting to keep the Americans from invading Canada. Tecumseh and the Indians are fighting desperately to hold on to their lands in the Great Lakes region and in the South as well. The real chance to set up a native state, a backing of a powerful empire behind it, comes in the War of 1812. And Tecumseh realizes that. Tecumseh realizes if he can get British help, what he will be able to do is carve out an Indian border state in between Canada and the United States. And the British are thinking seriously of doing this as a, as a way to protect Canada, as a bar to further American expansion. And in the early fighting, it goes very well for them. And the Indian peoples win significant battles. But again, they're warriors. They're not armies. You can win all these battles, but if your supplies are cut off, if the British can no longer supply you, if warriors have to go home to feed their family, then it doesn't matter how many times you defeat the Americans, there's always a new army. And when Tecumseh finds that the British are retreating, retreating not because they've been defeated, but because their supplies have been cut off on Lake Erie, and Tecumseh at that point knows it's over. In October of 1813, Tecumseh was killed in battle. His British allies surrendered, leaving Tecumseh's warriors alone to continue the fighting. As they learned of his death, the Indian forces abandoned the field. His lifeless body was eventually seized by the victorious Americans and torn limb from limb. After Tecumseh's death, the Indian Confederacy collapses. There will never be, after Tecumseh, a confederacy on the scale of the one that he put together. And any realistic hopes of Indian peoples carving out this special status of maintaining an independence between empires and republics, that's really gone. The War of 1812 is a critical war for Indian peoples. Um, after that, their ability to negotiate between empire and republic is gone. And Americans will, after this, try to dictate to Indians. They no longer have to be appealed to them as allies. You no longer have to worry about them going over to another empire and helping them out. Those days are gone. 